Now I have here a print of a 3D Apollyon gasket fractal. Um, perhaps not everyone in the audience has heard of this fractal. Certainly anyone who's read the book Indra's Pearls will know what it is. Um, they might not know about the 3D variety, but if you do a quick Google search, you'll discover that there are many, many renderings of this particular fractal. Now, I'm someone who's been interested in fractals for many years, and I spent a lot of time thinking about what the best medium for representing a fractal is. And in all the years I've been working with fractals, I have never concluded that a static print is the best medium. Now, given that, it might not surprise you to learn that this print is actually not a print at all, as you will hopefully discover when I do this. This is in fact a digital hologram. And uh, what I want to talk about in this video is A, the various mediums that I attempted to use to visualize this fractal and the difficulties I encountered, how I eventually concluded that a digital hologram was the best medium, but then also to go into a little bit about how you can build your own digital hologram, because for me this seems like an extremely natural medium for mathematical art, and yet it seems to be extremely underutilized. The first medium I tried is 3D printing, and uh, you can see that the result is pretty darn awful. There is just way too much detail that is below the resolution limit of the 3D printer. And the next medium that I tried is a glass etching, and uh, I think it's pretty undeniable that this is a big improvement over the 3D print. Uh, you get a lot more detail this way, but there's still something a little bit unsatisfying about this. After I finished the glass engraving portion of this project, I thought that I was done. The idea that I could use a hologram as an artistic medium for this project just didn't even occur to me. I think because I didn't even really understand that the technology exists, which I think is a very common problem. However, fortunately for me, one of my artist friends, uh, Sydney Koch, she was on her way to a holography conference in Korea, which is very close to me. It's just a two hour flight. I thought, oh, holography, what's that? Well, you know, I'll go with you. I'll come and I'll check out the technology. So then we go to this conference. Uh, you can see this is us right here. I take a look at the technology and I am just astonished by what I see. And I'm like, okay, this is the medium that I have been looking for. But I still have a problem because, you know, I don't have a lab to produce these things. So how do I get started? And I sort of realize what I need is almost like a 3D printing company, but for holograms. And I get introduced to these guys right here, the Jante brothers. And it turns out that they have exactly this type of business. When you're using a hologram printing service such as Chimera Holography or an alternative such as Geola, the information that you need to provide to the manufacturer is a series of renderings of your 3D object. So that means you need some kind of 3D rendering software. So here I'm using 3D Studio Max, but you don't have to. You could use something else. Getting the camera angles that I need is quite simple. I just download this 3D Studio Max script from the manufacturer website. Next, you have to load the script into 3D Studio Max, which is quite simple. This is it right here. And just to give you a sense of what's going on here, you have this very handy little rectangle right here, which represents the hologram screen. So you can sort of see right now, I've got this set up so that the hologram is sort of poking out of the screen a little bit. And these arcs here are all the different camera angles. After that, there's not really much to do. You set a couple parameters, such as the hologram size, and away you go. So that is the story of how I became aware of digital holography as a potential artistic medium, how I built my first digital hologram, and how you can do the same. Thanks for watching.